बिफोर वी विल प्रोसीड विद गुप्ता डायनास्टी गुप्ता डायनास्टी को पढ़ने से पहले हम थोड़ा बहुत सतवाहाना डायनास्टी के बारे में पढ़ेंगे लेट मी गिव यू ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट वन इंपॉर्टेंट डायनास्टी ऑफ द साउदर्न इंडिया विच इज ए सतवाहाना डायनास्टी दिस सतवाहाना डायनास्टी इज ए टोल्ड यू वेन आई वॉज टीचिंग यू द डिक्लाइन ऑफ द मोरियन एम्पायर विच स्टार्ट यू टू डिक्लाइन आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ अशोका इन टू हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी टू बी सी वट हैपन देन दिस मॉरन डायनास्टी हु रूल्ड विच रूल्ड ओवर द एंटायर इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट वेन इट कोलेप्स इट very smaller dynasties came into existence among those dynasties which succeeded in mauryan dynasty in the north in the north india it was sungas kanwas <clears throat> then in the north western portion it was kushans however in the southern india the important dynasty which came into existence in india in the southern portion it was satvahanas it was satvahana dynasty satvahana dynasty ki jab bhi baat aagi to andhra pradesh dimag mein rakhna aap kyunki there you know their main area of activity was the present day andhra pradesh okay so this satvahana dynasty came into existence after the fall of mauryan empire in around uh, you know in around 1 in a, in a, in the first century bc in the first century bc so about this satvahana dynasty the the ruler who you know this they actually ruled over a long time period of 460 years there were various ups and downs through which this dynasty passed and they ruled their headquarters their capital was known as pratisthana this was the capital of satvahanas pratisthana pratisthana is in modern pathan which is a place in maharashtra remember this this satvahana dynasty they it ruled over the southern india it ruled over what's known as the dakkan it ruled over the dakkan portion of india this dynasty ruled over a long period of 460 years from their headquarters their main this capital this was pratisthana modern pathan in maharashtra the founder of this satvahana dynasty was simukha simukha or simukha this he was a founder of this satvahana dynasty okay so we are not sure there is a huge controversy regarding the origin and the original homeland of the satvahanas there is a controversy among the historians as what you know about their original identity they used to have the titles jo titles adopt karte the that was satakarni 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 about this title there is also a controversy as to what it actually means their original home their dynastic name which was you know this uh, satvahana satvahana ka matlab kya hota hai some scholars some historians are correlating this satvahana name with uh, the charites some are saying that you know this was a dynastic name this was the family of the seven you know this was the you know, family of uh, this was the dynasty of the seven families and all that however there is no unanimous there is no unanimity among the scholars regarding their original identity regarding their original homeland about you know you can say they the satvahana they are also known as andras they are they are also known as andras so the main area from which they ruled you can say this is the present day telangana we have the large number of coins and seals coins and seals which have been discovered in this area telangana so we can say that this was the main center of activities of the satvahana dynasty their founder the founder of satvahana dynasty was simuka he was a great ruler because he he founded you know he, the, the ruler who founds the dynasty is always considered as a guru as a great ruler as a great ruler it's not a small achievement when a dynasty is founded so it was simuka who founded this satvahana dynasty his he you know he tried he he was a brahmana by birth but he 
was very liberal towards the Buddhist and the Jains. It was Simuka who actually built various Jain and Buddhist temples in his empire. Buddhist temples. Because in his empire, various Buddhists and Jains lived and he wanted to take them into their confidence so that he could establish, he could consolidate his empire. It was because of that reason that he is known for the construction of his Jain and Buddhist temples when he ruled. Okay? After him, there was one more, you know, I, I cannot, there are various, there are, uh, you know, there are, there are about, there are about uh, 20, around 20 kings who ruled Satvana dynasty. I am telling you the important kings which had some achievement to their credit. Another important ruler of this Satvana dynasty was Hala. Hala, his achievement in, is in the field of literature. This Hala. He wrote, he wrote a book called Gatha Sapta Sati. Gatha Sapta Sati. A book written by Hala in a Maharashtri form of Prakrit, uh, Prakrit language. In Prakrit language we can say uh, that was Peshachi Prakrit. Peshachi Prakrit. So this Gata Saptasati book is written in Prakrit language. This book was written by Hala. It, com it comprises of around 700 verses on subjects like, you know, erotics. Erotics is subject based, uh, you know, this book comprises around 700 verses. The book written by Hala. He was, you know, his achievement is in the field of literature. He patronized actually. He patronized various other scholars who lived in his court. One such scholar was Gonadia. 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 G-A-U-N-D-Y. Gonadia. He was also a scholar. And it was Gonadia who actually wrote a book called Brehat Katha. Brehat Katha. I am telling you what is important from the examination point of view. Remember this. Gonadia was patronized by Hala and this Gonadia was also an important scholar who lived uh, during his times. You know this uh, Brahat Katha is you know this a uh, book written by Gonadia. Okay. Then about you know after Hala we have the most important king of the Satvahana dynasty. The most powerful king of the Satvahana dynasty. After Hala, there was a sort of eclipse. There was a sort of vacuum. There was no one powerful who could have, who could have actually continued uh, the, the consolidation of the Satvahana Empire. There was various ups and downs through which this empire passed after the, after the, after the death of Hala. It was mainly, it was, it was attacked by the dynasties like Sakas from the northern India that weakened it. And their lost prestige, their lost prestige, their lost, you know, their lost power, the power which was no more there, that was revived by their most powerful king of this Satvahana dynasty. He is known as Gotamiputra Satakarni. Gotamiputra Satakarni. Gotamiputra Satakarni was the most powerful king of the Satvahana dynasty. Okay, there is a controversy regarding his time period in which he ruled. Some historians are saying that it must be 100, it must be from 102 AD up to 126 AD. He ruled from, this is, you know, although some historians are saying uh, some 20 to 30 years, it is, uh, you know, uh, some are saying that he ruled from 86 AD up to 110 AD. Some are saying that he ruled from 160 AD up to 130 AD. But this is taken as the middle average time, average reign. Uh, we can, we generally consider that he ruled India, he ruled the parts of Dakkan, uh, parts of Southern India from 102 AD up to 126 AD. Okay, just have this idea that what was, you, you don't need to remember the dates deeply, you just have this uh, sequence in the mind only. So this was Gautami Putra Satakarni who, Revived the lost prestige, who revived the power, who revived the strength of the Satakarni, you know, the Satvahana dynasty. 
we are getting the information about this Gautami Putra Satakarni from an important inscription, from, a, from an important prasasti. Prasasti means an inscription. That, that prasasti, that inscription is known as Nasik inscription. Nasik prasasti. Prasasti means inscription. Nasik prasasti. This Nasik prasasti was written by his mother. Her mother's name was Gotami Balasiri. Gotami Balasiri. So this is this Nasik inscription written by Gotami Balasiri, who was a mother of Gotam Gotami Putra, you know, this Satakarni, who you know, which this inscription gives us the detailed information about the rule of Gotami Putra Satakarni. The achievements which, uh, you know, the achievements for which he is very famous, this Gotami Putra Satakarni. Okay? About Gotami Putra Satakarni, it said that he defeated various kings. He defeated various uh, uh, kings of the various dynasties to, uh, by which, by, you know, by, by the help of which his rule extended. He brought, you know, he brought various areas under his control, like, like areas around Narmada, Malava, Saurashtra, okay, parts of, uh, parts of Rajasthan, parts only, not full Rajasthan, parts, parts of Rajasthan, okay, then he brought under his con uh, you know under his control the areas around Konkan. Konkani is a language of modern Goa. Goa, so you, so you can say that the areas around the modern Goa are the areas including Goa that is uh, referred to as the area Konkani. Konkani is a language which is spoken in modern Goa. Okay, so uh, I, uh, this uh, these were the areas and you know along with Maharashtra parts of Maharashtra. So he. He brought these areas under his control. See the extension of his empire. See the, see the size of his empire. Okay. Among his important achievements is that he defeated one powerful ruler of his times. Who had caused much trouble to the Satvahana dynasty. The name of that ruler was Nahapana. Nahapana. Nahapana belonged to a dynasty called the Western Shatrapas. That was one of the branch of the Shakas. Of the Sakas. Western, he belonged to the branch called as Western Shatrapas. Western Shatrapa branch of the Saka dynasty. So he, he defeated him. He defeated his, this powerful emperor, Nahapana. This is a great achievement of Satvahana dynasty. He, he, you know, he removed that obstacle, that impediment which lied uh, before his, uh, you know, before his dream of establishing a huge empire. Okay? He was... This, this Gautami Putra Satakarni, he was a devout follower, he was a devout Brahmana, Brahman, Brahmana, he was a Hindu, he was a devout Brahmana, but he was liberally following the state policies, he didn't discriminate it between the people on the basis of their birth, on the basis of their religion. Although he, he was a staunch follower of his own religion, uh, Brahmana, for which he is known as Ika Brahmana as well. He is known as Ika Brahmana. Okay. The title, the title of Ika Brahmana is associated with the name of Gotami Putra Satakarni. If you will come across a question in your examination, who, who was known as Ika Brahmana, so the answer will be Gotami Putra Satakarni. Ika Brahmana literally means that the only protector of the Brahmans. Only protector of the Brahmanic religion. That's why he was known as Ika Brahmana. But he is also remembered for his large donations. Which he made to the Jains and Buddhists. Jains and Buddhists. He made a huge donations for the construction of Jain and Buddhist temples. For the construction of Jain and Buddhist monasteries and stupas. So such was uh, the, the mentality, such was the mindset and uh, you know this 
the policies of this Gautamiputra Satakarni, the most powerful king of the Satvahana dynasty. Okay. After the death, after the death of Gautamiputra Satakarni, after successfully carrying out a huge empire, he was succeeded by various rulers, but they were not so powerful as was as was Gautamiputra Satakarni. The ruler who succeeded Gautamiputra Satakarni, this, this question may come to the exam, that was Vesishta Putra Pullamai. Vesish, Vesishta Putra Pullamai. So Vesishta Putra Pullamai succeeded Gautamiputra Satakarni. His important achievement is in the field of navy. It said that he gave importance to the coastal areas, he gave importance to the ports, he tried to modernize his navy by the help of which he wanted to have the influence over the other uh, you know, neighboring regions which were in the Indian Ocean. This is attested by what is known as ship, what is known as ship with Ship with a double mask. Okay, ship with a double, it's mast. Ship with a double mask type of coins. Ship with a double mask type of coins, okay? So this type of, these types of coins are attributed to Vashishta Putra Pulamai. In those coins, he has shown some ships. You know, when coins make an image, he has shown their ships with a double mast. He has shown their ships with a double mast. So which means that the strength of navy under him, it was, it was very important. So he, he gave much importance to the navy during those times. So this is something which you can, you know, this achievement can be associated with the name of Vashishta Putra Pullamai, who succeeded Gautami Putra Satakarni. So, although there are various kings, but these kings, uh, these uh, two, three kings are the four kings, those are the important kings, uh, and their brief achievements which I have highlighted here, you have to remember those things from the examination point of view. So, about Satvahana dynasty as a whole, Satvahana dynasty which ruled over the modern Deccan, which ruled over the Deccan and the states like Maharashtra, parts of Karnataka, Gujarat, Rajasthan, parts of you know, Madhya Pradesh, this dynasty, as I told you, as far as the administration of this dynasty is concerned, Administration ke mein dekhte hain. It was the hereditary monarchy. Hereditary monarchy. Hereditary monarchy which prevailed. King was absolute. He exercised all the legislative, judicial, and you know this the executive functions of the state. There was practically no check on his powers, although there were some assemblies and his ministers who tried to influence the state policies, but it was ultimately the king whose will prevailed over all the others. He was helped, you know, you know, you know this, after king, after king, there were the various royal princes, royal princes, and the members of the royal family, about, about king first, you know, he used, used to, have a simple title of Rajan. Simple title Satakarni to tha hi, lekin they also used to adopt the title of Rajan, these kings. So kings ke baad, jo the important officers of the state were the members of the royal family. They also were adopting the titles like Rajas. Raja kehte hai apne aapko. So they assisted the king in the exercise in the, in the exercise of state powers. Then there were another class of officials. Those officials were important. They constituted an important section of the society. They were known as Maharathis. Maharathis and Mahabojas. Maharathis and Mahabojas. These were the powerful class of officers who lived during the Satvahana dynasty 
and it is said about him that they maintain they maintain matrimonial matrimonial relationship matrimonial relationship with uh, with the family of the emperor such was their influence this maharathis and mahabojas the important segments of the the bureaucracy who held the important positions of the state furthermore another class of officers they were known as mahasenapatis mahasenapatis mahasenapati senapati he was heading the army and uh, maha talwara maha talwara these were the other important class of officers who had the influence in the administrative line of satvahana dynasty okay then about the satvahana empire satvahana empire satvahana dynasty satvahana empire was divided into provinces the those provinces were known as janapadas janapadas these provinces these janapadas were divided into districts districts district was known as ahara okay district was known as ahara the class of officers the officers who headed the districts like the present day district collectors the aharas who aharas were looked after by the officers called amachas 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 were the officers who looked over the affairs at the ahara level at the district level aharas then below the ahara level there were usually villages and uh, the various assemblies who assisted in the village administration he who you know which assisted in uh, you know in in the management of day to day affairs at the village level at the bottom level okay so this was some uh, important information about the administrative about the polity which prevailed over uh, the you know this satvahana dynasty and for the more remember what other information about the satvahana dynasty it was agricultural economy it was agriculture which was as usually which was you know as was the case with the other dynasties of the time agriculture was the main agriculture was the backbone of economy and the most important feature of this satvahana economy was that they made the beginning of land grants they made the beginning of land grants ye aapko lagega chhota sa point lekin this point has such an importance because it was because of this provision for land grants due to which the later system of feudalism developed in india okay now we feudalism kya hota hai isme main aapko alag se lecture dunga i will tell you separately what is actually this feudalism but feudalism was actually a socio political setup which was based upon the land grant kya hota tha na aapko ek ek idea dene ke liye feudalism mein jo hai ek land grant diya jata tha ek ek person ko who is to have all the authority all the powers towards the people who lived in that land grant for example a village or some huge uh, or, or you know or a group of villages were given to a person who was responsible for the administration and the collection of revenue in that area or he he didn't only used to collect the revenue from that area he practically ruled over the people who lived on that land ground on that area they were completely subordinated by that lord who looked after you know who looked after that uh, land area he, you know they were the people were considered the, the condition of people was like the slaves who lived in you know that piece of land so this system is known as feudalism and in feudalism a person didn't had the control over his own life the control over his family if yes for example if a person wanted to marry his daughter he had to sought the permission from the lord from the head of that land grant from the head of that land grant upon which he used to work so their condition was feudalism 
actually feudalism is a concept which didn't only develop in India, it was prevalent over the entire world, it, it was prevalent in the Europe as well. In Europe, the difference was, you know, difference was something, you know, in Europe it was prevalent in its worst form, but it was not as worst as in the Indian case. You just remember about feudalism in simple terms that it was based upon the decentralization. It was based upon the decentralization of power. Because the power was decentralized to a lord who used to have the control over this land grant. Who headed this land grant. It was a lord. Okay. This decentralization, you mean to say that you know there was a hierarchy. Hierarchy of administration. Hierarchy, hierarchy, you know, th this system was like king was at the top, then was the lord, lord looked after, you know, this, uh, this land grant, then there was actually another person who wielded the power below, you know, below, his, below the person. Yeah, kuch line bani thi, hierarchy bani thi from top to bottom. This hierarchy is an important characteristic of feudalism. The socio-economics and the political setup which was based upon the land grant was the feudalism which which, you know, which had its origin in the Satvahana dynasty. This is important from the examination point of view. Because we have the first reference, we have the first epigraphic evidence. We have the first epigraphic evidence for the first time in Indian history, the first epigraphic or the inscriptional evidence regarding the land grants comes from the Satvahana dynasty. Hence we can say that they made the beginning of the land grants or the, you know, which became the cause for the later on feudalism. Okay? So, remember this point. Again, in addition to this agricultural economy, they gave importance to the trade and commerce as well. They gave importance not only to the internal trade, they gave importance to the external trade as well. They carried on the flourishing trade with the various countries of the world. They carried on the trade with the countries like Arabia, Egypt and the Roman Empire during those times. There were the flourishing ports. There were the flourishing ports in the Indian Eastern coastline which carried on this flourishing trade and commerce with the rest of the world. Among the important ports which you should remember, among the important ports of the Satwana dynasty, some important ports were Bari Gaza, Bari Gaza. Then you had Kalyana. Kalyana was the most important port. Sopara. So this Bari Gaza, Kalyana and Sopara were some important ports which were there under the times of, you know, under the times of Satvahanas. And they were known for their commercial prosperity. They were known for their huge and extensive trade which they carried on with the other countries of the world. Indian agricultural products like you know this cotton, the textiles and the various spice spices like cardamom and turmeric they were traded from these ports to the western countries during those times. We have the information from, you know we have the information from various Roman scholars, various contemporary Roman scholars who have you know who have given the evidences who have testified the flourishment of this trade which prevailed. Okay? So, uh, these are some important aspects of the Satvahana dynasty, uh, important factual information of the, you know, this Satvahana dynasty. And this Satvahana dynasty, they gave patronage to the Prakrit language. Prakrit language flourished under them. Furthermore, as far as the art and architecture is concerned, as far as the art and architecture is concerned, it was also given importance, it was under the Satvahana dynasty which patronized the great school of art known as the Amravati school of art. Amravati school of art. Now, when I gave you a lecture diya tha about the Gandhara and Mathura and the Amravati school of art, you have also read that this Amravati school of art was an important school of art which developed in the Amravati region of present-day Andhra Pradesh which was patronized more 
you know this uh, amravati school of thought which was patronized by the dynasties like satvahanas and the ishkavas which flourished in the amravati place of present day andhra pradesh so this school was patronized by them it's another important important achievement of the satvahanas this satvahana dynasty remember they had the contribution towards the art and culture of india as well as they patronized the amravati school of art the image and idols of the lord buddha not only lord buddha the image and idols of the various other personalities of those times which were produced at amravati they were exported they were exported to the countries of south east asia they were exported to the countries of sri lanka and hence we can say that it was the amravati school of art which had the great influence over the culture of the southern india as a whole over the culture of the south east asia over the culture of sri lanka because they those ideals and images which were transported which were exported to those places they were later on you know they they still bear some kind of influence they still we still have the influence of this uh, satvahana dynasty uh, in, in the culture of you know uh, in the culture which prevail, which is prevalent during you know, which prevalent towards those areas so this satvahana dynasty mein jo amravati school of art hai is amravati school of art mein jo images wagera jo statues jo idols produce kiye gaye the they were exported they were used for the trading purposes and they were traded they were traded throughout uh, you know throughout the neighboring countries of the india okay so remember this important information about satvahana dynasty it's all important from the examination point of view i have just given you the brief brief uh, description about the various facts aspects which are important from the examination point of view if you want to go for further studies or the further research i must say although it's important it's you know it's it's sufficient as far as uh, the exams like ias and ssc are concerned if you are, if you want to go further deep on this topic i will suggest you that go through the books by the romila thapar and rs sharma you can have some more idea from there uh, so it's all about satvahana dynasty let's start with the gupta dynasty now okay